Hello everybody. I hope everybody watching us from you are having a great time. This is Afri Post and welcome to today's video. Now, religion remains a very very important tool that has been used by different societies to help in conditioning the mind of people or society in a certain way. And this is a tool that has been used for ages, passed from one generation to another. However, in recent years, we have seen a decline in the number of people who try to affiliate themselves to a certain religious organization or even a denomination, while there is a general drop in the number of people who consider themselves Christians, there is an interesting pattern that has developed among black people. We are seeing that there is a significantly high number of blacks who have decided that they are unaffiliated to any religious organization. This is because most blacks have considered Christianity as a tool that ensnared them into slavery and it was a tool that was used by the white man to kind of suppress their growth and limit their freedom over a period of time. While I have struggled to come into agreement with this kind of thought, I was kind of convinced by this preacher that I'm going to play his video today. He has talked about how Christianity is something that has been working at the detriment of the black person. He's saying that a black person had nothing to gain with becoming a Christian. However, White people had a lot to gain when a black person converted to Christianity. He's trying to give us a snippet of the readings that he had in the book that is referred to as the Negro Bible. So let's listen to this preacher, then come back and talk about this topic more. The title of this book is How to Make a Negro Christian. Now, after having read this book, I realized that it doesn't talk really about it talks a little bit about how to make a black man a Christian. It talks more about why is it important to make a black man a Christian. And very few books have broken my heart like this book. I will not lie to you. Very few books have broken my heart like this. Because this book firstly brought to my attention that we did not choose to be Christians. Christianity was imposed on us with the voice, with the most vile, violent, inhuman methods that you can perceive. This book also clearly identifies the fact that for black people to become Christians it was more for the advantage of white people than it was for the advantage black people it served the best interest of white people for me to be a Christian than it does save my interest another point it talks about this guy called Dr. Reverend Charles Colcock Jones. Dr. Charles Colcock Jones was a was a slave master who had plantations, about six, seven plantations. And in each plantation there were slaves. There were black slaves. Now, in the north, black people were not even allowed to worship God. Black people were not even allowed to be exposed to the message of Christianity. Because these were savages. These were animals. Now, this Colcock Jones was one of the first people who gathered the people in his plantations 
black people and started sharing the message of Jesus. During that time, there were a lot of slave insurrections. Meaning black people who were slaves would wake up in the middle of the night, kill all the white people that were in the plantations, burn their houses and run away. They knew they would be caught, they would be killed. It didn't matter to them. There, were, there are more than 400 slave insurrections that are recorded in America. This is the guy who started saying, let me gather black people and let me teach them about Jesus. Let me teach them about the gospel. And he realized this. The more he taught them the Bible, the more he taught them the Bible, the more tamed, the more docile, the more, the more um, diluted they became. The more he taught them the gospel, the more humble they became. The more he taught them the gospel, the more a threat the less a threat they became to white people. And he's one of the few people who never had a slave insurrection in his plantations. Now he took it upon himself to teach white people. And said, do not be afraid teach black people the message of Christianity because it makes them less militant it makes them docile it makes them humble it makes them controllable now that is such a great message that I think we as people are watching it must ensure that it spreads to every black person because for many years Christianity was used as a tool of subjugation and as a tool of ensuring that black remained obedient, remained silent even when oppressions were directed towards them. We have seen how this reverend is talking here. He has said that this tool, first of all, after reading the Negro Bible, he was able to learn that blacks did not choose to be Christians. But this Christianity was imposed on blacks through various treacherous methods. We were beaten up. We were moved away from our original countries or even continents. And we were mishandled and disrespected. Then this Bible was shoved down our throats. And we were told that we were only better if we remained to be Christians. Christianity has been used to continue, even to date, to try to quiet some voices that are trying to speak up. It is a tool that has been used quite perfectly to ensure that a black person is not able to rise up and talk against any system of oppression or injustice that is facing them. We are told that blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. You know, this has been interpreted differently. There are those who say that this poverty is spiritual poverty. And then there are those who say that this is also encompassing physical poverty, the poverty of reality that we face as a human beings. And I want to say that this is one of the verses that has been used to really push a certain message towards black people to make them feel that regardless of their circumstances, they must remain hopeful and docile at the same time because being poor is something that should be accepted because it shows that some blessings are yours. So I think... It is a tool that we must really talk about in a greater extent. And I like the story of Dr. Charles Cocott Jones, who was a slave owner and somebody who was also a reverend. The preacher here is kind of telling us that he is the first person 
who decided to use this Christianity and teach black people about religion. And after teaching them about this, he realized that they were able to remain unmotivated. They were able to remain docile and not aggressive as they were before because these promises that they were getting from the Bible kind of gave them some hope that they were able to forget their current status and embrace the new oppression that they were being subjected to. And this is something that I think continues to be used even to date, where religious organizations are used as a tool for kind of trying to push certain messages to African people. And the church and the state work together to ensure that they continue making people more docile and more weak and less interested in issues of governance. And that is why Africa has remained captured by the white person. And because of the perception that Christianity has been used as a tool of oppressing black people, I think this answers the question that I asked before when we were beginning the video, that why is it that we are seeing an increasing number of black people trying to unaffiliate themselves from the church? This is because they have known the truth about the church and they are not able to be party to a system that helped build those systems that continue to oppress them. Studies have shown that roughly one in every five African Americans, that is 21%, say that they are religiously unaffiliated, according to a recent poll that was done by the Pew Research Study. The younger African Americans, the rate is even higher because approximately 28% of Gen Z and 33% of millennials say they are religiously unaffiliated, compared to 11% of baby boomers and 5% of the silent generation. So it tells you that initially those generations that came before us, they were highly religious and therefore it was easier for them to be controlled, it was easier for them to be moved in a certain way and they were able to surrender and not really try to put themselves in the position that they should have really acquired through their strength. But we are seeing that this number is now increasing where very many people are starting to say that they do not want to be considered as Christians because they have known what the truth about Christianity is. They have seen the impact of Christianity in their lives. They have seen how black people have systematically been discriminated because the Bible was used as a tool to really appease them and make them feel good about nothing. Yet they were having a raw deal in the engagement with their slave masters. This, as has been established, also tells us the challenges that most African nations went through during slavery and colonization. We have seen that most of us in Africa, we are told that the Bible came first to open the way and then the gun came later. So the Bible was used as a tool of ensuring that Africans were able to accept whites and they were able to allow them and welcome them in their most precious places. But then the white person has remained arrogant and hostile towards black people, even to date. So in my research to understand what could be the reason behind the exodus of blacks away from churches, I came across certain salient points that I want to summarize for you here. And I want us to read and you really get to understand the deeper meanings of things that are happening. The migration of many black individuals away from traditional churches is influenced by a range of social, cultural, and personal factors. This shift reflects broader changes in religious engagement and community dynamics. The first one is cultural relevance and disconnection. Many black individuals find that traditional churches do not always reflect their cultural and social realities. The conventional church experiences, which often emphasizes a certain set of practices and beliefs, may feel disconnected from the lived experiences and contemporary issues facing black communities. This disconnection can lead to a sense of alienation and a search for religious spaces that better resonate with their values and experiences. Now, black people are starting to understand that this Christianity that we have been sold for over the years in the past generations and even to date does not really resonate with our culture. Blacks do not find themselves really put at the center of the Bible. Yet, we have always realized that this Bible was manipulated by people who intended to pass their own message to the world. It is just within a few years ago that we started to understand 
that the Jesus Christ that we have always been told was Jesus, the white one that has been hanged in every place, is not the true Jesus. That was a drawing. However, the Bible places the genealogy of Christ in Africa, and that is why it has been noted that Christ was black and not a white person as has been represented in the Bible. So if you look at these kind of things, you're able to see that there is a sense in which white people did not want Christianity to be associated with blacks. However, it was used for them to really put themselves into that holiness level that would make black people feel like they are the worst and they need to really surrender to the white person. Another issue here is the rise of non-traditional religious movements. There has been a notable rise in non-traditional and informal religious movements, including spiritual but not religious identities, which attract people seeking a more personal and less institutionalized approach to spirituality. These movements often emphasize individual spirituality and personal empowerment, which can be appealing to those who feel constrained by traditional church structures. So this is also a very important thing to note, and I think I would agree with it to some extent. There is a sense in which the human being of today desires some level of freedom. The conventional churches have been used as institutions of impacting or implementing a specific social ideology within the population. However, people want freedom in their religious spaces and therefore they are choosing to associate with themselves with spiritual entities or spiritual organizations that are more personal to them and those that can reflect their personal needs and personal desires. So this also is an issue that I think has positively impacted the decline in black communities going to churches. Another one is issues of representation and leadership. There is also concern about representation and leadership within traditional churches. Some black individuals feel that church leadership does not adequately address or represent their perspectives and needs. This lack of representation can lead to a decline in church attendance as individuals seek communities where their voices and concerns are better acknowledged. Now this really aligns with the question of black Jesus and everything that I said about it. Because when people do not feel themselves represented in a certain place, there is a highly likely that they will always opt out of such entities or even organizations. And that is why since Christ has been portrayed as a white person, the black man has seen that it could be not very, very important for me to be in a church because this Christ that they want me to worship is also white. Yet the person who continues to persecute me also is a white person. So there is no need of me trying to really support a God that is a white God, yet I as a person can have my personal representation. Another one is critique of institutional failures. Some black individuals are moving away from the church due to criticisms of institutional failures, including issues related to financial mismanagement, scandals, and a perceived disconnect between church teachings and ethical behaviors. These concerns can erode trust in religious institutions and drive people to explore alternative avenues for spiritual fulfillment. I think this is self-explanatory. Another in social and political dynamics. The social and political climate can also play a role. Traditional churches sometimes have conservative stances on social and political issues which may align with the progressive values of some younger black individuals. As societal values shift, there can be a growing desire for religious spaces that are more in tune with the contemporary social justice issues and progressive ideologies. I think this also really reflects the, current, the current affairs where we are seeing that things are changing quite fast and there are certain pertinent issues that the current generation think are very, very vital towards their growth. However, the previous generation, like the silent generation or even the baby boomers, they may not consider them as issues of concern. We have seen a rise in the number of people who promote abortion at certain levels in the United States. So when we have churches that do not allow any form of abortion, you find that the current population, there is a high likely that they will not be part of such organizations. So this is really what the research is kind of trying to portray. The final one is generational changes. Younger generations in particular are showing different patterns of religious affiliations. They may be less inclined towards organized re religion, 
and are more interested in personal spirituality or secure secular approaches. This generational shift contributes to the overall movement away from the traditional church settings. And therefore, it is quite important to note that the black community has borne the brunt of a lot of issues and teachings that come from the Bible. And therefore, it is very evident that knowing that this Bible was a tool which was used against you or a tool that was used to ensure that you are able to toe a certain line, such thoughts can even lead you to feel disappointed in yourself. So I try to understand why there is this rise in the number of people who attend churches. And I think Christianity and the Bible has been used in a way that may not be very, very fair to black people. So that is it for us today. If you like such kind of videos, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and also share. Also remember to give us your perspective down in the comment section so that we may also understand what you think and what you know about the topic. Thank you, and may the good Lord bless you. Goodbye.